reconnective healing is an art, it's a science, and it's a philosophy. It doesn't have a philosophy, it is a philosophy. It is easily learnable, easily teachable, because it's not really healing that you're teaching. What you're doing is you're sharing a transmission of the energy, light, and information throughout the room of the students and then showing them how to become familiar with it, to recognize it, to work with it. It's not an energy healing technique. It doesn't require steps. It doesn't require rituals. It doesn't have a basis in fear where you have to protect yourself from negative energy. It's clean, it's clear, it's grounded. It's practiced by lay people around the world. It's practiced by doctors in hospitals as well as in their own private practices. We have to understand that the world and all of these manifestations are reflections of us. It's easy to want to go out and send a healing to a country, send a healing to a situation, send a healing to a house or to a land or to a government. The reality is, is when we share healings one-on-one -on -one as human beings, we start making better choices and decisions, even in whom we empower in governments who make those choices and decisions or who we remove from power for making certain choices and decisions. It's like looking into the mirror. The world is a reflection of who we are. If we don't like what we see in the mirror, it is most likely not because the mirror is broken. When we try to heal these reflections, we're working on the symptoms. When we try to heal these reflections, it's like applying, it's like a woman applying makeup to the mirror itself. It might look all right if she doesn't move, breathe, or live. But once reality comes into play, you see the artificial separation. When we share healings one-on-one, -on -one, this is where we begin to change the world.